Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We are here and once again it is our great pleasure to be in your reality. So we are gathered once again for a Sunday moon afternoon. It is what many would call a perfect day in the south. North Carolina at its best. The skies are blue, uh, minimum uh, interference on the airwaves, uh, people are happy or they think they are happy, uh, the leaves are slowly turning and you are getting the whiff of autumn in the air. Pumpkins everywhere and not so far in the future you have uh, the upcoming uh, cross quarter of Halloween or Hallow's Eve, All Saints Day, etc., All Souls Day, very, very important time. Uh, where energies are stirred up. A few days ago it was a new moon and uh, new moons, uh, actually on Thursday, uh, initiate a new cycle, new beginning. You were talking about the solar eclipse of August. That would be a big new beginning uh, in your country and of course uh, as we have mentioned many times but we will uh, reiterate here that uh, that eclipse uh, happened a very tender place in Donald Trump's, President Donald Trump's chart and uh, it could mean many many things uh, but definitely it was a karmic placement and he is exceptionally vulnerable and uh, someone was talking about projections of uh, perhaps his departure or demise but we would just add in that uh, when you have a president or a person of great prominence and the eclipse falls as it did, not by his son, but by his ascendant Mars karmic position, activating some, some very, very big issues. Uh, he's not as stable, let's say, as they are wanting you to believe this. Uh, chaos, lots of chaos behind the scenes, lots of rumblings, lots of uncertainty, and it's only going to grow and grow and grow. And on that level, uh, let's say, the trust levels are, are being betrayed. Um, people don't know who to trust anymore. The double agent, a triple agent, who's on what side, who's, who's pretending to be all for this when they really are not. So it's very, very complex on the inner circles of politics and for those of you who are looking into the globe of it and attempting to see what's going on and come up with some rationale or some understanding, you're only going to be able to do it psychically. And of course that is uh, why you are here, why we are here, to uh, remind you of your own empowerment, to emphasize that you are creators and co-creators of your reality. And you do it effortlessly. You do it with uh, panache and grace and sometimes struggle, but however you do it, you're doing it. And all people, all people are thinking. They have consciousness within them, so they, are, they have issues. And you know consciousness is not annihilated. It is uh, translated over, transferred into what you call other realities after you decease. So there is no point in ever being afraid of being deceased or thinking that being deceased is an ending. It is a waste of energy. And of course what we are encouraging all of you to do is to how to tap into energy, how to raise your own energy, how to spend the energy. It is our intention of course, intentions are a way of directing energy. It's just a, like a conductor waving the wand. Your intentions wave a wand that instructs the field of existence as to how you want your symphony played. And you are doing it all the time. So part of the challenge now, as you are being bombarded uh, by uh, all manner of insider fighting that is a war on America. And Donald Trump, as you well know, uh, he's a, a retired uh, a reality king, but yet he's just shifted his reality show from television to the capital. 
and basically uh, it's been reported that uh, other countries around the world are, are enthralled and fascinated by the American reality show because they see things occurring, Trump saying things, people saying things back, and the reports have come in from various countries around the world that the TV shows cannot compete and that people are not watching the soap operas and reality shows in foreign countries. The American, American reality show where Trump has put one American against another. And this is what reality shows are about, yes? Each individual competes. So it is not his orchestration. He is being played. And there's not a politician that you have had in centuries that does not have men in the back room. Now women are more involved. But someone is in the back room dictating, setting up, manipulating, massaging, maneuvering the forces that want to govern people. And this is a time out of mind battle. Do you help the people or do you work with those behind the scenes that want to suppress the people and keep the people from figuring out how much power they have? We are not talking about money power. We are talking about inner power, inner, the power of the mind power to manifest. This is essential to understand. From time out of mind, especially since the Anunnaki came to visit about half a million years ago, and the, this batch of Anunnaki, they were mostly threatened by a people, a creation that they helped to bring into form, that innately had power within it to supersede the Anunnaki. We can talk more about that later if you wish. But we are seeding some ideas for you, creating a scenario so that you can picture it. And of course, picturing and using your imagination is absolutely the cheap and easy way to create what you want. It has been advised to you for a long time that uh, think about it, put some energy behind it, use your third eye, picture what you want. And of course, uh, there's many a successful athlete who has trained in the capacity of picturing it, no matter how inadequate or uncoordinated someone is. The discipline is not in the muscles, in the training. Of course, it is there. The more you repeat things, then of course, the body takes on the memory and then it performs which there are much more facile ways to do things. You practice your golf game in your mind. You practice your baseball swing. You practice catching a ball. You imagine it. And people might think, what a waste of time. Oh, it is not at all. It has been a well, well, well proven technique. And there's not any of the top athletes who have not been programmed in this capacity picturing, imagining your skills. And when you picture it, the body then will align itself neurologically to fulfill what it is that you want. So for example, uh, this doesn't work just for athletes, it works for all things. And no matter how you define yourself, oh, I've always been overweight, how could I possibly lose weight? Or, oh, I've always been uh, afraid of heights. Or, oh, I, I, I've never been able to walk more than a block or two. Or, me, I couldn't run. Or, oh, I'm not coordinated, how could I possibly swing a golf ball or a, or a golf club? Whatever you're, I could never. Oh, I can't. I've always been. These are stories you tell yourself, often based on past experience. The problem about past experience is that it's past experience. And too many people carry that past experience into the now, and worse, project it into the future, as if things are never going to change. 
as if once you are uncoordinated then you could never be coordinated or once you failed a spelling bee then forever you will never be able to know how to spell this is foolishness and yet these ideologies are accepted time out of mind by humans so having a body just because you have a body does not mean you know what to do with it or how to manage it and becoming aware uh, of how you hold the body how you operate your structure your your spine your pelvis and how you hold yourself and carry yourself is very very important it, it begins to develop the first level of awareness another level of awareness is listening listening to the words that you use to describe how you feel and of course honesty is the best policy but also you must exhibit some manner of cleverness so that you use words that augment your expressions and clarify your expressions without damning yourself with a oh I'm always this way or I'm so afraid or I'm full of worry or uh, our forbidden words uh, are should trying guilt worry uh, 